You tell me where a gentle maiden dwelleth named Yum Yum. The ward of Coco, in pity speak, oh speak, I pray you. Why, who are you who ask this question? Shreds and hatches of ballad songs and snatches and dreamy lullaby. My catalogue is long through every passion ranging, and to your humors changing, I tune my supple song. I tune my song. Sentiment is wanted. I've patriotic ballads cut and dried. For wherever country's banner may be planted, all other local banners are defied. Our warriors as hairy ranks are severed. Never quail or they conceal it if they do. And I shouldn't be surprised if nations tremble before the mighty troops that rules of Digi. Song of the sea, we leave the capstan round. With a yo he ho for the windy sweep, the anchors are trip and our hands are leap. Hurrah for the homeward bound. Yo ho, he ho, hurrah for the homeward bound. To lay aloft in a howling breeze, we 
every tickle a landsman's taste. But the happiest star a sailor sees is when he's down at an inland town with his Nancy on his knees. Yo ho! And his armor round her waist. Then man the captain of we go as the fiddle swings us round. With the old people and a rummy lump, we'll laugh at the whole world long. With the old people. Of pallid songs and snatches and dreamy lullaby and dreamy Be your business with Yum Yum? I'll tell you. A year ago, I was a member of the Titty Poo Town Band. It was my duty to take the cap round for contributions. And while discharging this delicate office, I saw Yum Yum. Oh, we loved each other at once. But she was betrothed to her guardian, Coco, a cheap tailor. And I saw that my suit was hopeless. Overwhelmed with despair, I quitted the town. Judge of my delight when I heard a month ago that Coco had been condemned to death for flirting. I hurried back at once, in the hope of finding Yum Yum at liberty to listen to my protestations. It is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting, but he was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the exalted rank of Lord High Executioner under the following remarkable circumstances. A great Mikado virtuous man, when he to rule a land began, resolved to try a plan whereby young men might make me steady. So he decreed in words succinct that all who flirted, leered, or winked, and less gone knew we are leading. So it was with me beheaded, 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 so it was with me beheaded. And I explain to you all agree that he was right to so decree. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right, and right can be. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right, as right as right can be. And all is right, as right can be. The decree you'll understand goes great dismay throughout the land For young and old and shy and bold were equally affected The youth who winked a roving eye or breed a non-conubial sigh Was thereupon condemned to die He usually objected, objected, objected He usually objected <laughs> I was I expect that he was right to so object And I am right and you are right and everything is quite correct And you are right and we are right and everything is quite, is quite correct And everything is quite correct Straight laid out of bail, a convict from the county jail, whose head was next on some pretext, condemned to be mown off, and made him headsman for we said, who's next to be decapitated, cannot cut off another's head until he's cut his own off, his own off, his own off, until he's cut his own off. <laughs> 
and we are right. I think you say you are, you win this kind of way. And I am right, and you are right, and all is right to Lula Lane. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right to Lula Of Titty Poo? Why, that's the highest rank a citizen can attain. It is. Our logical Mikado, seeing no moral difference between the dignified judge who condemns the criminal to die and the industrious mechanic who carries out the sentence, has rolled the two officers into one. And every judge is now his own executioner. But how good of you, for I see that you are a nobleman of the highest rank. To condescend to tell all this to me, I'll be a strolling minstrel. Don't mention it. I am, in point of fact, a particularly haughty and exclusive person of pre-Adamite ancestral descent. You will understand this when I tell you that I can trace my ancestry back to a protoplasmal primordial atomic globule. <laughs> Consequently, my family pride is something inconceivable. I can't help it. I was born sneering. <laughs> But I struggle hard to overcome this defect. I mortify my pride continually. When all the great officers of state resigned in a body because they were too proud to serve under an ex-tailor, did I not unhesitatingly accept all their posts at once? And the salaries attached to them. <sighs> you did. It is consequently my degrading duty to serve this upstart. As First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chief Justice, Commander-in-Chief, Lord High Admiral, Master of the Buckhounds, Groom of the Backstairs, Archbishop of Titipu, and Lord Mayor, both acting and elector rolled into one. And at a salary. A poobah paid for his services. I, a salaried minion. Oh, but I do it. It revolts me, but I do it. <laughs> and it does you credit. And perhaps that may be so. But I don't stop at that. I go and dine with middle-class people on reasonable terms. I dance at cheap suburban parties from moderate fee. I accept refreshments at any hands, however lowly. I, um... Also retail state secrets at a very low figure. For instance, any further information about Yum Yum would come under the head of a state secret. Uh. <laughs> ah! Another insult! And I think a light one. <laughs> Likewise, go to yum yum the fair. You must not do. It will not do. I'm sorry for you. You are very imperfect, abortioner. <laughs> this very day from school, yum yum will wait her way and home will come with me to come and the wrong to come to where the Lord. And the brass will crash, and the trumpets play, and they'll put it as their wedding day. She'll toddle away as all of her with the Lord my executioner. And the brass will crash, and the trumpets play, and they put it as their wedding day. This case, as you may see, and in your place, away I flee. But don't blame me, I'm sorry to be of your pleasure, a dear man, you should have. I love all the pectic feet, this soon. In a 
going to fetch this afternoon. A honeymoon with that moon at seven the men so so you shall And the brass will crash and the trumpets play and they'll follow to dance in their wedding day. She'll toddle away as all of her with a lord by executioner. And the brass will crash and the trumpets play and the car to dance in their wedding day. For a month or nearly to learn that yum yum to my love so dearly. This day to conquer is to be united. <sighs> the fact appears to be as you've recited. Good morning. But here he comes, equipped to suit his station. He'll give you any further information. So adventurous a tale Which may rank with most romances Taken from the county jail By the city of Claudius Chances Surely never had a man So adventurous a tale which it will ever be my study to deserve. 
if I should ever be called upon to act uh, professionally, I'm happy to think that there will be no difficulty in finding plenty of people whose loss will be a distinct gain to society at large. Meh. 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 As someday it may happen that a victim must be found, I've got a little list. I've got a little list of society offenders who might well be underground and who never would be missed, who never would be missed. There's the pestilential nuisances who write for autographs, or people who have flabby hands and irritating laughs, or children who are up in dates and floor you with them flat. Or persons who on shaking hands shake hands with you like that. And all third persons who on spoiling tate our tates insist they'd none of them be missed. They'd none of them be missed. He's got them on the list. He's got them on the list. And they'll none of them be missed. They'll none of them be missed. There's the income tax commissioners and all their prying clerks. We know that they exist. I've got them on the list. And vulgar little street boys who are rude in their remarks and who never will desist. I've got them on the list. And all the water companies who violate a pledge. For there my Jews a hatchet with a rather jagged edge. And the British rail official who, when services don't go, lays all the blame on fallen leaves and inappropriate snow. <laughs> And that singular anomaly, the extra lyricist. Well, I don't think he'd be missed. I'm sure he'd not be missed. He's got him on the list. He's got him on the list. And I don't think he'll be missed. I'm sure he'll not be missed. There's the Welsh MP who wore a rose and talked for far too long. I think you get my gist. <laughs> Well, I had him on the list, and the people who admit they like the Eurovision song. Let none of them be missed. Let none of them be missed. There's the folks who've given Disneyland a continental house. It's not the same to hear them shouting, Voici Mickey Mouse. <laughs> There's the man in grey who seems to be a major cause of strife And who thinks Bellini's Norma is the story of his wife <laughs> But it really doesn't matter whom you put upon the list For they'd none of them be missed They'd none of them be missed You may put them on the list You may put them on the list And they'll none of them be missed They'll none of them be missed <laughs> I expect my three beautiful wards, Yum Yum, Peep Bo, and Pity Sing, in a few minutes. If you would kindly receive them with a show of abject deference, I shall feel obliged to you. Pooba! <laughs> 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 ah, it seems that the festivities in connection with my approaching marriage must last a week. Well, I, I should like to do it handsomely, and I want to consult you as to the amount I ought to spend upon them. Certainly, in which of my capacities. As First Lord of the Treasury, Lord Chamberlain, Attorney General, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Privy Purse, or Private Secretary. Uh, suppose we say as Private Secretary. Speaking as your Private Secretary, I should say that as the city will have to pay for it, don't stint yourself, do it well! Exactly! As the city will have to pay for it, that is your advice. As Private Secretary. Of course you will understand that as Chancellor of the Exchequer, I am bound to see that your economy is observed. Oh. You said just now, don't stint yourself, do it well! As Private Secretary. Now you say that your economy must be observed. As Chancellor of the Exchequer. I see. Well, come over here where the Chancellor can't hear us. <laughs> now then, as my solicitor, how do you advise me to deal with this difficulty? Of course, as your solicitor, I should have no hesitation in saying chance it. Thank you, I will. If it were not, says Lord Chief Justice, I am bound to see that the law isn't violated. I see. Well, come over here where the Chief Justice can't hear us. <laughs> now then, as First Lord of the Treasury? Of course, as First Lord of the Treasury, I could propose a special vote that would cover all expenses. But, then as leader of the opposition, it would be my duty to resist it tooth and nail. 
Or as paymaster general, I could so cook the accounts that as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover the fraud. <laughs> Maxton as Archbishop of Chichipu, it would be my duty to denounce my dishonesty and give myself into my own custody as First Commissioner of Police. That's extremely awkward. I don't say that all these distinguished people couldn't be squared, <laughs> but it is right to tell you that they wouldn't be sufficiently degraded in their own estimation unless they were insulted with a very considerable bribe. The matter shall have my careful consideration. Thank you. Don't mention it. Oh, but my bride and her sisters approach, and any little uh, compliment on your part, such as an abject grovel in a characteristic Japanese attitude, would be esteemed a favour. Grovels is an extra. Oh, throw in a grovel, Puma. No money, no grovel. You'll be grossly insulted as usual. You're not going to 
going to kiss me before all these people. Well, I'm certainly not going to kiss you after them. Seems odd, don't it? It's rather peculiar. I expect it's all right. Must have a beginning, you know. Well, of course, I know nothing about these things. But I've no objection if it's usual. Oh, it's quite usual, I think. A minister of fun? <laughs> Done. <laughs> I have not banned it yet. There. Thank goodness that's over. Why, that's never you. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Will you present me? Oh, One at a time, if you please. Oh, if you please. He's the gentleman who used to play so beautifully on the... on the... On the Marine Parade? Yes, I think that was the name of the instrument. <laughs> Sir, I have the misfortune to love your ward, Yum Yum. Oh, I know I deserve your anger. Anger? Not a bit, my boy. <laughs> Why, I love her myself. Charming little girl, isn't she? Pretty eyes, nice hair, taking little thing all together. <laughs> very glad to hear my opinion backed by a competent authority. Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye. Take him away. Oh. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but what is this? Customer come to try on. That is a tremendous swell. It's alive. Go away, little girls. Can't <laughs> talk to little girls like you. Go away, there's dears. Allow me to present you, Pooh Bar. These are my three wards. <laughs> the one who is crying for the musical gentleman is my bride elect. Well, what do you want me to do with them? Mind, I will not kiss them. Oh, no, no, you shan't kiss them. A little bow. I mean, nothing. Well, you needn't mean it, you know. Uh, it goes against the grain. They are not young ladies, they are young persons. <laughs> Oh, come, come, make an effort. There's a good nobleman. Ah, <laughs> well, I shan't mean it. <laughs> mm. Mm. Hold it all, little girls, hold it all. Oh, my pretty plasmal arm sisters. That's very good. I see nothing to laugh at. It is very painful for me, they have to say. Oh, hold it all, little girls, hold it all to young persons. I am not in the habit of saying, oh, hold it all, little girls, hold to anybody under the rank of stockbroker. <laughs> Don't laugh at him. He can't help it. He's under treatment for it. Oh, oh them. Never mind them. They don't understand the delicacy of your position. We know how delicate it is, don't we? I should think we did. How a nobleman of your importance can do it at all is a thing I never can, never shall understand. <laughs> Show too much respect towards thy kind of you, but nobody does, and why should you? But you know that trust that every cling is hard and us is hard and us. To every wrong and every cling so hard and us, so hard and us if we decline to dance and sing. <laughs>
pitiable is the condition of a young and innocent child brought from the gloom of a ladies' academy into the full-blown blaze of her own marriage ceremony. And with a man for whom I care nothing. True, he loves me, but everybody does that. Yum, yum! At last I find you alone. I have sought you night and day for three weeks in the belief that your guardian was beheaded, and now I find you're about to be married to him this afternoon. Alas, yes. But you do not love him. Alas, no. Modified rapture. <laughs> but why do you not refuse him? What good would that do? He's my guardian, and he wouldn't let me marry you. But I would wait until you were of age. You forget that in Japan, girls do not arrive at years of discretion until they are 50. True, from 17 to 49 are considered years of indiscretion. Besides, a wandering minstrel who plays a wind instrument outside tea houses is hardly a fitting husband for the ward of the Lord High Executioner. Oh, but oh, shall I tell her? Oh, yes, she will not betray me. What if it should prove that, after all, I am no musician? There, I was certain of it directly I heard you play. <laughs> What if it should prove that I am no other than the son of His Majesty the Mikado? The son of the Mikado? But why is Your Highness disguised? And what has Your Highness done? And will Your Highness promise never to do it again? Some years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate Katisha, an elderly lady of my father's court. She misconstrued my customary affability into expressions of affection and claimed me in marriage under my father's law. My father, the Lucius Junius Brutus of his race, ordered me to marry her within a week or perish ignominiously on the scaffold. That night, I fled his court, and assuming the disguise of a second trombone, I joined the band in which you found me. When I had the happiness of seeing you... If you please, I think Her Highness had better not come too near. The laws against flirting are excessively severe. But we're quite alone. Nobody can see us. Still, that don't make it right. To flirt is capital. It is capital. And we must obey the law. Oh, deuce take the law. I wish it would, but it won't. But if it were not for that, how happy we might be. Happy indeed. If it were not for the law, we should now be sitting side by side, like that. Instead of being obliged to sit half a mile off, like that. We should be gazing into each other's eyes, like that. Breathing sighs of unutterable love, oh, oh. like that. And with our arms around each other's waists, like that. Yes, if it wasn't for the law. If it wasn't for the law. As it is, of course, we couldn't do anything of the kind. Not for words. Being engaged to Coco, you know. <laughs> Being engaged to Coco? Would I not do Coco blighted?
drunken station, worldly sneers are not to us. And to mark my admiration, I would kiss you fondly thus. But as you're engaged to Coco, do embrace you thus can Coco distinctly be no Joko, and who oh, am yeah, I should get Toko 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 So in spite of all temptations, such a thing I'll not discuss, and on no I kiss you fondly thus. Will I kiss you fondly thus? Let me make it clear to you, this is what I'll never do. This, all this, all this, all this, this is what I'll never, never do. This, all this. Entirely, my future happiness is wrapped up in that little parcel. <laughs> really, it hardly seems worthwhile. <sighs> oh, matrimony! <laughs> matrimony, yes! Yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Can't you see I'm soliloquizing? You've been trapped in an apostrophe, sir. We are the bearers of a letter from His Majesty the Mikado. A letter? From the Mikado? And what in the world can he have to say to me? It's in Japanese. <laughs> oh, here it is. I thought it would come sooner or later. The Mikado is struck by the fact that no executions have taken place in Titipu for a year and decrees that unless somebody is beheaded within one month, the post of Lord High Executioner shall be abolished and the city reduced to the rank of a village. <gasps> but that will involve us all in irretrievable ruin. <laughs> yes, there's no help for it. I shall have to execute somebody at once. The only question is, who shall it be? Well, it seems unkind to say so, but as you're already under sentence of death for flirting, everything seems to point to you. Uh, to me? <laughs> Go along with you. <laughs> what are you talking about? I can't execute myself. Why not? Why not? Because in the first place, self-decapitation is an extremely difficult, not to say dangerous thing to attempt. And in the second, it's suicide, and suicide is a capital offence. That is so, no doubt. And we might reserve that point. True, it could be argued six months hence before the full court. <laughs> Besides, I, I don't see how a man can cut off his own head. A man might try, even if he only succeeded in cutting it half off. That would at least be something. It would be taken as an earnest of your desire to comply with the imperial will. <gasps> no, no! Pardon me, but there I am adamant. 
official headsman, my reputation is at stake. And I can't consent to embark upon a professional operation unless I see my way to a successful result. This professional conscientiousness is highly creditable to you, but it places us in a very awkward position. My good sir, the awkwardness of your position is grace itself compared with that of a man engaged in the act of cutting off his own head. Now, I'm afraid that unless you can find a substitute that... <gasps> a substitute? Oh, certainly. Nothing easier. Pooba. Mm. I appoint you Lord High Substitute. I should be delighted. Such an appointment would realize my fondest dreams. But no. No, no, at any sacrifice, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. I am so proud before your lord, my family pride to be my guide. I volunteer to quit this fear instead of you in a minute or two. My family pride must be denied and set aside and mortified and mortified. My brain in tears. Now every man to eat his plan should plot and plan as best he can. I heard one day a gentleman say that criminals who are cut in two can hardly feel the pain to steal and so a stain of stain without with pain. If this is true, it's jolly for you. Your car is true to be this adieu. <laughs> I am so proud of I heard I to go. It recollects to disrespect, did I neglect to thus effect this game direct? So I object. And so, oh, oh, I wish to go, and greatly pine to brightly shine and take the line of a hero fine. It's we could dine, I must decline. And go and show a friend and for how much you dare, I'm quite aware it's your affair. Did I declare, I take your share, but I don't much care. I so I object. So I I must have I must have To sit and talk in the silence, in the dark, 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 in the place of with a knock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock, from a cheap and cheap tongue among a big, bad clock. To sit and talk in silence, in the dark, 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 in the place of with a knock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock, from a cheap and cheap tongue among a big, bad clock. But I'll love, come, but moment simply in order to benefit my native town am now required to die within a month and that by a man whom I have loaded with honours <clears throat> is this public gratitude <laughs> is oh go away sir how dare you Am I never to be permitted to soliloquize? Oh, go on! Don't mind me! <clears throat> Is this public gratitude? What are you going to do with that rope? Oh, I'm about to terminate an unendurable existence! Terminate your existence? Nonsense. What for? Because you're going to marry the girl I adore! Nonsense, sir! I won't permit it! 
I'm a humane man, and if you attempt anything of the kind, I shall order your instant arrest. Come, sir, desist at once, or I summon my guard. Oh, that's absurd. If you attempt to raise an alarm, I instantly perform the happy dispatch with this dagger. Oh, no, no, don't do that. This is horrible. Why, you cold-blooded scoundrel. Are you aware that in taking your life, you are committing a crime, which is... which is... which is... What's the matter? Is it absolutely certain that you're resolved to die? Absolutely. Will nothing shake your resolution? Nothing. Threats, entreaties, prayers, all useless. All oh, my mind is made up. Then, if you really mean what you say, and if you're absolutely resolved to die, and if nothing whatever will shake your determination, don't spoil yourself by committing suicide, but be beheaded handsomely of the hands of the public executioner. But I don't see how that would benefit me. You don't. <laughs> Observe. You'll have a month to live, and you'll live like a fighting cock at my expense. When the day comes, there'll be a grand public ceremonial. You'll be the central figure. No one will attempt to deprive you of that distinction. <laughs> there'll be a procession. Bands, dead march, bells tolling. All the girls in tears. Yum yum, distracted. Then, when it's all over, general rejoicings and... A display of fireworks in the evening. <laughs> you won't see them, but they'll be there all the same. Do you think Yum Yum would really be distracted at my death? Oh, I'm convinced of it. Bless you, she's the most tender-hearted little creature alive. Well, I should be sorry to cause her pain. Perhaps, after all, if I were to withdraw from Japan and travel in Europe for a couple of years, I might contrive to forget her. Oh, uh, I don't think you could forget Yum Yum so easily. And besides, what is more miserable than a love-blighted life? True, life without Yum Yum. Why, well, it seems absurd. And yet, there are a good many people in the world who have to endure it. Poor oh, devil, yes. <laughs> You're quite right not to be of their number. <laughs> Be of the number. Noble fellow, I'll tell you how we'll manage it. Let me marry Yum Yum tomorrow, and in a month you may be head. Ah, no, 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 no. I draw the line at Yum Yum. Very well, if you can draw the line, so can I. Well, no, stop. Look at wait a bit. Well, be reasonable. How can I consent to your marrying Yum Yum if I'm going to marry her myself? Oh, my good friend, she will be a widow in a month. You can marry her then. Well, yes. Yes, that's true, of course. I, I quite see that. But dear me, my position during the next month will be most unpleasant. Most unpleasant. Well, not half so unpleasant as mine at the end of it. But... Oh, dear me. Well... I agree. After all, it is only putting off my wedding for a month. But, uh, you won't... Prejudice her against me, will you? You see, I've educated her to be my wife. She's been taught to regard me as a wise and good man. Now, I shouldn't like her views on that point disturbed. Uh, trust me, she shall never learn the truth from me. Volunteer. The Japanese equivalent of here, here, here. Tis nine people. 
Yam Yam Surrender Now I adore that girl with passion tender And could not quit her with a ready will For her a lot If I did not adore myself With passion tender I still With passion tender I still Oh yes, he loves himself With passion Has passed away. Night, the night may come to us. We The maid of whom I told you. No, you shall not go. This ocean of the fool. A fool that left my hallowed joys. A boy that seized no equipoise. Who rushed the judges from half the whole. Just 
He is the only son of yours.
I am indeed beautiful. Sometimes I sit and wonder in my artless Japanese way why it is that I am so much more attractive than anybody else in the whole world. Can this be vanity? No. Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother. upon me. I am to be married today to the man I love best, and I believe I'm the very happiest girl in Japan. <laughs> the happiest girl indeed, for she is indeed to be envied, who has attained happiness in all but perfection. <laughs> in all but perfection? Well, dear, it can't be denied that the fact that your husband is to be beheaded in a month <laughs> is, in its way, a drawback. <laughs> It does seem to take the top of it, you know. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. It all depends. At all events, he will find it a drawback. <laughs> well, not necessarily. Bless you, it all depends. I think it's very unfeeling of you to refer to such a subject on such a day. If my married happiness is to be... to be... Cut short? Well, cut short in a month. Can't you let me forget it? <laughs> oh, yum yum in tears and on her wedding morn. <laughs> They've been reminding me that in a month, you're to be beheaded. Yes, we've been reminding her that you're to be beheaded. It's quite true, you know, you are to be beheaded. <laughs> now then, some bridegrooms might be depressed by this sort of thing. A month? Well, what's a month? After all, these divisions of time are purely arbitrary. Who says 24 hours make a day? There's a popular impression to that effect. <laughs> Then we'll efface it. 
We'll call each second a minute, each minute an hour, each hour a day, and each day a year. At that rate, we've about 30 years of married happiness before us. And at that rate, this interview has already lasted four hours and three quarters. <laughs> Silly little cuckoo. Yes, how time flies when one is thoroughly enjoying oneself. That's the way to look at it. Don't let's be downhearted. There's a silver lining to every cloud. Certainly. Let's, let's be perfectly happy. By all means, let's, let's thoroughly enjoy ourselves. It's absurd to cry. <laughs> Quite ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Brightly dawns our wedding day. Joy and song we give thee greeting. With a river heart's most leading. Equal moment, please stay. Equal moment, please stay. But no mortal joys be hollow. Begin by putting your arm around her waist. There. 
<laughs> Let me get used to that first. Oh, wouldn't you like to retire? It must pain you to see us so affectionate together. No, no, I must learn to bear it. Now, oblige me by allowing her head to rest on your shoulder. Like that? Mm. I'm much obliged to you. Don't mention it. Now, kiss her. <laughs> Thank you. It's simple torture. Come, come, bear up. After all, it's only for a month. No. It's no use deluding oneself with false hopes. What do you mean? My child. My poor child. How shall I break it to her? My little bride that was to have been. Was to have been? Yes. You never can be mine. <gasps> what? <laughs> I've just ascertained that by the Mikado's law, when a married man is beheaded, his wife is buried alive. <laughs> buried alive? <laughs> buried alive is the most unpleasant death. But who did you get that from? Oh, from Poobah, Poobah and Poobah. Poobah, Poobah and Poobah. They're my solicitors. <laughs> but they may be mistaken. So I thought. So I consulted the Attorney General, the Lord Chief Justice, the Master of the Rolls, the Judge Ordinary and the Lord Chancellor. They're all of the same opinion. Never knew such unanimity on a point of law in my life. But stop a bit. This law has never been put in force. And not yet. You see, flirting is the only crime punishable with decapitation. And married men never flirt. Of course they don't. I quite forgot that. <laughs> well, I suppose I may take it that my dream of happiness is at an end. <laughs> Darling, I don't want to appear selfish, and I love you with all my heart. I don't suppose I shall ever love anybody else half as much. But when I agreed to marry you, my own, I had no idea, pet, that I shall have to be buried alive in a month. Well, nor I. It's the very first I've heard of it. It, uh, it makes a difference, don't it? I it does make a difference, of course. You see, burial alive, it's such a stuffy death. Well, I call it a beastly death. You see my difficulty, don't you? Yes, and I see my own. If I insist on your carrying out your promise, I doom you to a hideous death. And if I release you, you marry Coco at once! Here's how they do, fear for marry you. When your time has come to perish, then the maiden whom you cherish must be sorted too. Here's the how they do, here's the how they do. Here's a pretty mess, in a month or less I must die without a wedding, let the bitter tears I'm shedding witness my distress Here's a pretty mess, here's a pretty mess Here's a state of things, to her life she clings Matrimonial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion, very ill it brings Here's a state of things, here's a state of things With a passion that's intense, I worship and I know what he says is true, tis death to marry you. Here's a pretty state of things, here's a pretty how do you do. Here's a pretty state of things, a pretty state of things. Here's a how do you do. Lord, if what he says is true, I cannot, cannot marry you. Here's a pretty, pretty state of things. Here's a pretty how do you do. Must be slaughtered too. Here's the howdy do. Here's the howdy do. Here's a pretty mess in a month or less. I must die without a wedding. Let the bitch who tears I'm shedding witness my distress. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a pretty mess. Here's a state of things. Do her life in things. Matrimonial devotion doesn't seem to suit her notion. Very early brings. Here's a state of things. Here's a state of things.
<laughs> My poor boy, I really am very sorry for you. Thanks, old fellow, I'm sure you are. You see, I'm quite helpless. I quite see that. I can't conceive anything more distressing than to have one's marriage broken off at the last moment. But you shan't be disappointed of a wedding. You shall come to mine. That's awfully kind of you, but it's impossible. Why so? Today I die. What do you mean? I can't live without Yum Yum. This afternoon I perform the happy dispatch. No, no, pardon me, I can't allow that. Why not? Why, hang it all, you're under contract to die by the hands of the public executioner in a month's time. If you kill yourself, what's to become of me? Why, I shall have to be executed in your place. Well, it certainly seems so. Oh, oh, now then, Lord Mayor, what is it? From a, from a, from a cargo and his feet are approaching the city and will be here in ten minutes. Ricardo, he's coming to see where the orders are being carried out. Now, look here, this is getting serious. A bargain's a bargain, and you really mustn't frustrate the ends of justice by committing suicide. As a man of honour and a gentleman, you are bound to die ignominiously at the hands of the public executioner. Well, very well, then. Behead me. What now? Certainly as one. Yes, chop it off, Coco, chop it off. <laughs> My good sir, I don't go about prepared to execute gentlemen at a moment's notice. I never even killed a blue bottle. Still, as Lord High Blue Bottle, I mean execution. My good must... sir, as Lord High Executioner, I've got to behead him in a month. But I'm not ready yet. I don't know how it's done. I'm going to take lessons. I mean to begin with a guinea pig and work my way up through the animal kingdom until I come to a second trombone. What? Why, you don't suppose that as a humane man I would have accepted the post of Lord High Executioner if I hadn't thought the duties were purely nominal? I can't kill you. I can't kill anything. I can't kill anybody! <laughs> Poor fellow, we all have unpleasant duties to discharge at times. After all, what is it? If I don't mind, why should you? Remember, sooner or later, it must be done. Must it? I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? But why should I kill you when making an affidavit that you've been executed will do just as well? Well, here are plenty of witnesses. The Lord Chief Justice, the Lord High Admiral, Commander-in-Chief, Secretary of State for the Home Department, First Lord of the Treasury, and Chief Commissioner of Police. But where are they? There they are! <laughs> I'll swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand that all of us high officers of state are required to perjure ourselves to ensure your safety? Why not? You'll be grossly insulted as usual. Will the insult be cashed down or at a date? It will be a ready money transaction. Well, it'll be a useful discipline. Very good. Choose your fiction and I'll endorse it. <laughs> Family pride. How do you like that, me butt? Tell you that life without yum yums. Oh, yum 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 yum. Bother yum yum. Here, Commissioner, go and fetch yum yum. It's an extra. Take yum yum and marry yum yum. Only go away and never come back again. Oh, here she comes. Yum yum. Are you particularly busy? Not particularly. You have five minutes to spare? Yes. Then go along with his grace, the Archbishop of Titipu, and he'll marry you at once. But if I'm to be buried alive. Now, don't ask any questions, but do as I tell you, and Nanky Poo will explain all. But one moment. Not for worlds. Here comes the Mikado. No doubt to ascertain whether I've obeyed his decree. And if he finds you alive, I shall have the greatest difficulty in persuading him that I've beheaded you. Well, get off. Close thing that, for here he comes.
and I his daughter in law elect. He'll marry his son, he's only got one, to his daughter in law elect. My morals have been declared particularly correct. But then nothing at all compared with those of his daughter in law elect. Kind of way I govern each tribe and sect, or cheerfully own my sway. Except his daughter in law elect, as tough as a phone, with a will of her own, is his daughter in law elect. My nature is love and light, my freedom from all effect. Is insignificant quite compared with his daughter in law elect? Second, I'm generally reckoned a true philanthropist. It is my very domain endeavor to make to some extent each evil liver a running river of harmless merriment. My object for sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fix the crime, the punishment fix the crime. And make each malcontent unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. All rosy, dull society sinners whose chatter begins to fall are sent to hear sermons from unified Germans who sell you a piece of a wall. The overweight tenor whose vocal agility drives the crowd's berserk. Shall each chicken corner then sing a son dorma to Madame to swords wax work? The lady who dies a chemical yellow or stains her grey hair blue. Her skin shall be tinted and there on imprinted a suitably rude tattoo. A newspaper baron whose bigoted views are expressed by girls topless is forced by my minions to change his opinions by delicate use. All the press. My object was sublime, I shall achieve in time to let the punishment fix the crime, the punishment fix the crime, and make each man content, unwillingly represent a source of innocent merriment, of innocent merriment. Who calls for cuts and cheaper cures? His teeth, I've imagined, shall all be extracted by terrified amateurs. The rock and roll singer attends a series of masses and shoots and ops by barking to wolf with spore and behold and nothing from top of the pops. The snooker champion whose dress is passe in his tight little waistcoat and drawers, who waits all that chalk be snookered in bulk at any moment I choose. And there he'll pay for a year and a day in smoke-filled public halls on a cross and true with a twisted pew and elliptical billiard balls. Oh. Oh, 
the course of life. I shall achieve in time. So let the punishment hit the crime. The punishment hit the crime. And make it her content. A living in a season. A source of innocent merriment for innocent merriment. He's out the course of life. He will achieve in time. So let the punishment fit the crime. The punishment fit. Your Majesty. So am I. I guess the object of Your Majesty's visit, your wishes have been attended to, the execution has taken place. Oh, you've had an execution, have you? Ah, uh, yes. The coroner has just handed me the certificate. I am the coroner. And this is the certificate of his death. At Titipu, in the presence of the Lord Chancellor, Lord Chief Justice, Attorney General, Home Secretary, Lord Mayor, and Groom of the Second Floor Front. So they were all present, Your Majesty. I count them myself. A very good house. I wish I'd been in time for the performance. A tough fellow he was too, Your Majesty. A man of gigantic strength. His struggles were terrific. It really was a remarkable scene. Describe it. Oh. The criminal cried as he dropped him down in a state of wild alarm. With a frightful, frantic, fearful frown, I bared my big right arm. I seized him by his little pigtail, and on his knees fell he. As he squirmed and struggled and gurgled and guggled, I drew my sneaker's knee. My sneaker's knee. Never shall I forget the cry of the shriek that shrieked me. As I gnashed my teeth, when from its sheath I drew my sneakers me. We know him well, he cannot sell a true of groundless tales. He always tries to utter lies, and every time he fails. Silver and shock as he gave the sign, the stroke he didn't deserve. And all of a sudden his eye met mine, and it seemed to brace his nerve. For he nodded his head, and kissed his hand, and whistled an entity. As the sabre drew, cut clearly through his cervical vertebrae. His vertebrae. When a man's afraid, a beautiful maid is a cheering sight to see. And it's all oh, I'm glad that warm and sad was so by side of me. have said that head was dead for its own and dead was he. It stood on its neck with a smile well bred and bowed three times to me. It was none of your impudent orphaned nods but as humble as could be. For it clearly knew the deference due to a man of pedigree. And it's so how I found this death may bow was a touching sight to see. Though drowned as yet, it couldn't forget the deference due to me. This world he rude, he the truth whenever he finds his face. And in this face it's all to place, exactly as he says, exactly, 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 exactly.
very interesting, and I should like to have seen it. But we came about a totally different matter. A year ago, my son, the heir to the throne of Japan, bolted from our imperial court. Uh, indeed. Had he any reason to be dissatisfied with his position? None whatever. On the contrary, I was going to marry him. <laughs> Yet, uh, he fled. I am surprised that he should have fled from one so lovely. That's not true. No. <laughs> you hold that I am not beautiful because my face is plain. But you know nothing. You are still unenlightened. Learn then that it is not in the face alone that beauty is to be sought. My face is unattractive. It is. But I have a left shoulder blade that is a miracle of loveliness. <laughs> People come miles to see it. My right elbow has a fascination that few can resist. May I? It is on view Tuesdays and Fridays. <laughs> on presentation of visiting card. As for my circulation, it is the largest in the world. <laughs> Jetty fled. And is now masquerading in this town disguised as a second trombone. <laughs> a second, second trombone? trombone? Yes. Would it be troubling you too much if I asked you to produce him? He goes by the name of... Nanky Poo. Nanky Poo. Oh, well, that's quite easy. Oh, that is to say it's rather difficult. In point of fact, he's... What? Gone where? Gone abroad! Gone abroad! His address! Milton Keynes. <laughs> ah! What's the matter? Oh! See here! His name! Nanki Boo! Beheaded this morning! Oh! Where shall I find another? Where shall I find another? Here, here, here. This is very tiresome. My poor fellow, in your anxiety to carry out my wishes, you have beheaded the heir to the throne of Japan. <laughs> I beg for an unqualified apology. I just ask for associate myself with that expression of regret. You really hadn't the least notion. Of course you hadn't. How could you? Come, come, my good fellow, don't distress yourself. It was no fault of yours. If a man of exalted rank chooses to disguise himself as a second trombone, he must take the consequences. Oh, God, it don't it really distress me to see you take on so. I've no doubt he's thoroughly deserved all he got. Oh, oh, well, we are infinitely obliged to your majesty. Much obliged, your majesty. Very much obliged, your majesty. Obliged not a bit. Don't mention it. How could you tell? Impossible to tell who the gentleman really was. It wasn't written on his forehead, you know. Well, it might have been on his pocket handkerchief, but Japanese don't use pocket handkerchiefs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forget the punishment for compassing the death of the heir apparent. Punishment? <laughs> yes. Something lingering with boiling oil in it, I fancy. <laughs> Something of that sort. I, I think boiling oil occurs in it, but I'm not sure. I know it's something humorous, but lingering with either boiling oil or melted lead. Oh. <laughs> oh, come, come, don't fret. I'm not a bit angry. If your majesty will accept our assurance, we have no idea. Oh. Oh. I knew nothing about it. I wasn't there. That's the pathetic part of it. Unfortunately, the fool of an act says, compassing the death of the heir apparent. There's not a word about a mistake. No. Or not knowing. No. Or having no notion. No. Or not being there. No. There should be, of course. Yes, yes but there isn't. Oh. That's the slovenly way in which these acts are always drawn. It's a fool of an act. However, cheer up. It'll be all right. 
I'll have it altered. When? Next session. <laughs> now then, let's see about your execution. We'll after luncheon suit you. Can you wait till then? Oh, oh yes. yes. We, we can, can wait, wait till, till then. then. Good. Then we'll make it after luncheon. I don't want any lunch. I'm really very sorry for you all. But it's an unjust world, and virtue is triumphant only in theatrical performances. <laughs> See how the fates there give the law, for A is happy, B is not, yet B is worthy, I dare say, of more prosperity than A. Yes, be more worthy. I should say he's worth a great deal more than A. Your day is happy, oh so happy, laughing, ha ha, chopping, ha ha, nature, laughing, ha ha ha, and a joyous ever Which I'm not, we should enjoy a happy lot, and they should die in misery. It is assuming I am beat, but should they perish? That should be, of course, assuming I am beat. We should be happy, oh so happy, laughing, ha ha, chopping, ha ha, little popping, ha ha ha, but condemned to the easy, wretched meritorious be, but condemned to the easy, wretched meritorious be. into with your nodding head and your deference due to a man of pedigree. Merely corroborative detail intended to give artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise bald and unconvincing narrative. Corroborative detail indeed, corroborative fiddlestick. Well, you're just as bad as he is with your cockendable stories about catching his eye and his whistling in air. But that's so like you. You must put in your oar. Yes, well, you can't say much, Coco. Look at that rubbish about your big right arm. I mean, look at it. Yes, and your snicker sneeze. Yes, well, never mind that now. There's only one thing to be done. Nanky Poo hasn't started yet. He must come to life again at once. Ah, oh, here he comes. Nanky Poo! I've good news for you. You're reprieved. Oh, but it's too late. I'm a dead man, and I'm off for my honeymoon. Nonsense! <laughs> a terrible thing has happened. It seems that you're the son of the Mikado. Oh, yes, but that happened some time ago. Is this a time for airy persiflage? Your father is here, and with Katisha. My father? And with Katisha? Yes, he wants you particularly. So does she. Oh, but he's married now. Oh, bless my heart, what has that to do with it? Well, Katisha claims me in marriage. But I can't marry her because I'm married already. Consequently, she will insist on my execution. And if I'm executed, my wife will have to be buried alive. You see our difficulty. Yes. I don't know what's to be done. Well, there's one chance for you. If you could persuade Katisha to marry you, she would have no further claim on me. And I could come to life without any fear of being put to death. <laughs> I? Marry Katisha? I really think it's the only course. But my good girl, have you seen her? She's something appalling. Oh, that's only her face. She has a left elbow that people come miles to see. And I hear her right heel is much admired by connoisseurs. My good sir, I decline to pin my heart upon any lady's right heel. It comes to this, while Katisha is single, I, I prefer to be a disembodied spirit. When Katisha is married, existence will be as welcome as the flowers in spring. The flowers.
flowers that bloom in the spring, tra-la, we promise of merry sunshine. As we merrily dance and we sing, tra-la, we welcome the hope that they bring, tra-la, of a summer of roses and wine, of a summer of roses and wine. And that's what we mean when we say that a thing is welcome as flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la, tra -la 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 -la, the flowers that bloom in the spring. Tra-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la-la. The flowers that bloom in the spring, tra-la, have nothing to do with the case. I've got to take under my wing, tra-la, the most unattractive old thing, tra-la, with a caricature of a face, with a caricature of a face. And that's what I mean when I say or I sing. Oh, bother the flowers that bloom in the spring, tra-la-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la-la, oh, bother the flowers of spring, tra-la-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la-la, tra la 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 Oh, 
can appreciate me. I was educating his palate when he left me. Well, he is dead. And where shall I find another? It takes years to train a man to love me. Am I to go through the weary round again and, and at the same time implore mercy for you who robbed me of my prey? I mean by pupil. <laughs> Just as his education was on the point of completion. Oh, where shall I find another? Here. Here. What? Caddisha! For years I have loved you with a white hot passion that is slowly but surely consuming my very vitals. from me. <laughs> if, if there is aught of woman's mercy in thy heart, turn not away from a lovesick suppliant whose every, every <laughs> fibre thrills at your tiniest touch. True it is that under a poor mask of disgust I have endeavoured to conceal a passion whose inner fires are boiling the very soul within me. But the fire will not be smothered. It defies all attempts at extinction, and breaking forth all the more eagerly for its long restraint, declares itself in words that will not be winged, that cannot be schooled, that should not be too severely criticised. Cassisha! <laughs> I dare not hope for your love, but I will not live without it. <laughs> Darling. with the blood of my betrothed, dare to address words of passion to the woman you have so foully wronged. I do. Accept my love, or I perish on the spot. Ah! <laughs> Go to! Who knows so well as I that no one ever yet died of a broken heart? You know not what you say. Listen. On a tree by a river, a little tomtit sang willow, tit, willow, tit, willow. And I said to him, Dicky bird, why do you sit singing willow, tit, willow, tit, willow? Is it weakness of intellect, birdie, I cried? 
Or rather tough worm in your little inside With a shake of his poor little head he replied Oh willow, tit willow, tit willow He slapped at his chest as he sat on that bough, singing willow, tit willow, tit willow. And a cold perspiration bespangled his brow. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. He sobbed and he sighed and a gurgle he gave. Then he plunged himself into the billowy wave. And an echo arose from the suicide's grave. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. Now I feel just as sure as I'm sure that my name isn't willow, tit willow, tit willow. That was blighted affection that made him exclaim, Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. And if you remain careless and obdurate, I shall perish as he did. And you will know why, though I probably shall not exclaim as I die. Oh, willow, tit willow, tit willow. Did he really die of love? He really did. All on account of a cruel little hen? Yes. Poor little chap. It's an affecting tale and quite true. I knew the bird intimately. Did you? Oh, he must have been very fond of her. His devotion was something extraordinary. Poor little chap. And, um... <clears throat> If I refuse to marry you, would you go and do the same? At once! What? No, you mustn't! <laughs> oh, anything but that! Oh, I'm a silly little goose. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just a little teeny-weeny-wee bit bloodthirsty, will you? <laughs> Hate you? Oh, Katisha, is there not beauty even in bloodthirstiness? Especially when lashing off his tail. Oh, Cain was half a splendor that is green, and earth makes only terrified the dogs. But to him who's scientific, there is nothing that's terrific in the falling of a flight of thunderbolts. <laughs> yes, in spite of all my meekness, if I have a little weakness, it's a passion for a flight of thunderbolts. If that is so sincere, don't take me and for me up to someone. I will go and refuse to be told today is done. Old age, do you fancy you are elderly enough? Information I'm requesting on the subject interesting is the maiden or the better which is tough. Oh, I'm the psychomania, that's the general opinion that you'll ask about the one when she's tough. Are you old enough to marry, do you think? Or to wait till you're 80 in the shade? There's a fascination frantic in a ruin that's romantic, do you think you are sufficiently decayed? To the matter that you mention, I have given some attention, and I think I am sufficiently. Decay. If that is so simple, then it's evident that we are 
gentleman and his two well-meaning but misguided accomplices. <laughs> I am the after luncheon registrar. I see. But my difficulty is that as you have slain the heir apparent... The heir apparent is not slain. Bless my heart, my son. And your daughter-in-law, elect Ted. You are entitled to a little explanation, but I think he will give it better whole than in pieces. Well, Your Majesty, it's like this. It is true that I stated I had killed Nanky Blue. Yes, with most affecting particulars. A merely corroborative detail intended to give artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise bold and unconvincing... Will you refrain from putting in your own narrative? <laughs> When your majesty is like this, when your majesty says let a thing be done, that thing is as good as done. Practically it is done, because your majesty's will is law. Your majesty says kill a gentleman, and a gentleman is told off to be killed. Consequently, that gentleman is as good as dead. Practically he is dead. And if he is dead, why not say so? I see! Nothing could possibly be more satisfactory! <laughs> for he's gone and married, yum 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 yum. Your and the merry, for all will be merry. I think you had better succumb dum, dum. and join our expression. On this subject, I pray you be dumb. Dum, dum. Your notions, though many, are not worth a penny. The word for your guidance is mum. Mum, mum. You've got a good bargain in me. On this subject, we pray you be dumb. Dum, dum. We think you had better sit down. Dum, dum. You heard there are many who went for a penny, who went for a penny. There are lots of good fish in the sea. There are lots of good fish in the sea. There's lots of good fish, good fish in the sea. There's lots of good fish, good fish in the sea. Threatened cloud has passed away. Very But though the night may come too soon, we may as well be